Dr. Castleberry here with uh, one more segment for today uh, to look at your reading questions, discussion questions from COM2143 Digital Media Literacy. And uh, we're looking at three different texts and uh, lots of different questions from everyone. Great questions. Again, I, I just I'm not, I'm just taking a, a, a moment to point out uh, my enthusiasm for your strong uh, work in engaging these texts and, and certainly our, our goal to engage you in uh, this process of engaging these texts, right? Through our uh, asynchronous dialogue, right? And a digital lecture. And, you know, here's an, yet another example. I mean, it's, it's you know, page after page after of notes and things like that. And so, it, you know, it, it uh, perhaps is serving to be, you know, certainly a worthy investment of time, but an investment nonetheless. So I thank you all for your patience as some days you know, uh, tending to these, engaging the content you all are raising important, important questions to help us process these readings it is as important uh, as getting to certainly uh, graded and grading assignments as they come in. And, and I know we're at that point in time in the semester where it gets urgent and we're wanting certain feedback and, and there has been plenty thus far, but I know there's there more you're certainly on the lookout for. And uh, at the same time, man, uh, uh, this has been an exciting amount of work that you all put in that I have appreciated uh, the opportunity to get to uh, respond and be, be a part of with you here. So. Let's look at a few more, and actually we're gonna pause it for this session, and I'm gonna have to come back to some of these responses at a different point in time. So hang in there, and uh, you know, you can archive these. Hey, you can be watching these lectures, listening to them at the gym, uh, or wherever, maybe put in an ear, you know, an ear pod out in the, I don't know, the hunting shed, uh, you know, go out in the woods, stream an app, uh, but but use those e earbuds because I'm sure the sound of my voice will absolutely uh, you know uh, cause cause all the, the the woodland animals to fall over laughing and and and, and then quickly scurry away. So um, here's some uh, questions and commentary from Hannah, starting with notes on writing well in the 21st century. Linda Spencer, the very first paragraph of this chapter on page 73. Um, uh, the issues with the spread of false information is discussed. Spencer writes, quote, in the 21st century, it is more important than ever to constantly use your critical assessment skills in evaluating the facts you decide to cite in your writing, end quote. The Wikipedia, the social media age we live in, makes such an atmosphere for sharing fake news, intentionally or unintentionally. Hmm, uh, kind of like our definition of plagiarism. What methods do you use to vet your information? Well, let's start from, you know, at this point in, in time, I have experience through repetition. So I, I am vetted at uh, looking at information enough as many times that it is easier, more efficient to parcel out uh, quality, quantity, and so on, v validity, value, uh, accuracy, ethics, um, but, um, you know, one of the things you can do is not always look at the same source uh, again and again. You know, this is a problem I see with a lot of people online on social media. This was a trend I noticed throughout 2016. In 2015, right, online, when we got into those political election cycles, and it doesn't matter, like, whatever camp, if you're in one camp or another camp, the problem was a pro a big problem I, i'm having to you know choose parcel my words carefully here a, a an enormous issue is when someone's continuously making cases but they're just using the exact same source over and over to make case after case after case they could be related they could be unrelated well what is that but one take and then what if what if the one site they're using over and over and over again uh is 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 opinion led uh, well, well, so so, what's the validity of those claims, right? Um, that's something that, that that immediately comes to mind. 
but are authors are authors of pieces uh, of research are they researchers are they authors are they journalists are they just opinion leaders are they social media influencers these different categories probably should be should have different designation depending on who they are and so ask yourself are these authors specialists in the fields that they are writing about uh and if not what are their qualifications that's that's a huge enormous step and it doesn't take as much effort as we think to look some of that up or are they are they someone that's simply trendy right are they we use that term talking head uh there's a difference on let's use the example of cable news uh, between p uh, journalists that work on the, for those stations and people that are quote unquote talking heads, meaning they're a paid to just, they're paid a salary. It's, it's probably, you know, it could be primary or secondary salary for them to just spout in, you know, informed opinion or, you know, uh, strong opinion. And we need to understand when we're seeing that versus, you know, pure journalism, uh, are they social media influencers with zero credentials? And that is a thing. That is a big thing. I see people, this is, we were just talking about viral videos uh, earlier in our segments for this week. And viral videos uh, get populated and shared. And man, am I overseeing people with zero credentials, make, making viral videos that they get, you know, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of views on a topic that they they have a real passionate take on it and it sounds good like they executed the heck out of that that little spiel that hot take but if but then go go check them out uh and here's the thing you know sometimes we pass it around and we praise them like look at this come this common folk uh that had such a such an impassioned word on their heart that they had to share and it's like what a way that they really capture the moment and how I feel. So I need to share it again. And, and then we're all liking it and stuff and we'll go do some digging. And, and sometimes, uh, one comes to mind that, that I recall, I can't remember the name or you know, the topic. It was definitely political in some way. But, uh, when I, when I got past the emotion of the, of the seemingly everyday life, speech and it was of course shot from someone's vehicle and you know to signify that they are you know uh out on the range or you know just doing common life uh and, and i and i go and track down some of their background oh guess what they've got a bunch of other videos that are doing the exact same thing so they're already on a, on a trend trying to create that viral moment through repetition um and they're kind of in that process of maybe becoming some kind of brand right? So it's almost like they're on the job market to be the next social media influencer is an impression that I get sometimes. Okay. So does that make sense? Do they know what they're talking about? <laughs> it's another question I would, I would, what is their track record? Uh, last section of the chapter in pages 84 to 96 cover resources and how to properly give credit. And that, ah, uh, ah, uh, we need to be better at properly giving credit. This is one of the reasons we ask you to create a references page at the end of every week's discussion questions. Everyone should be doing this every week. Uh, references page, APA stock, because that's the standard style of the university. And um, we're, how can we be better? How can we rise above these bad habits if we're not practicing them, right? We have to practice them ourselves. Um, this section covers the precision and attention to detail that comes with keeping track of sources with social media and fake news world we live in being so complacent about details do you think the number of copyright infringements will increase in the coming years well, they, i mean they can they do technically gifts and memes so like borderline copyright infringement all the time it's just a matter of is it a good thing to have to send out the cease and desist is it necessary or is and it's just timing like has it happened yet? Like it's only a matter of time before something gets taken down. Kind of like when you find clips of, I don't know, The Office or whatever on YouTube. It's only a matter of time, right? It's going to get taken down. Uh, some companies are more protective. Some companies are quicker on the response. Um, but that this comment about we live in in, in this era of, of of conflicting information and 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 people or organizations being complacent about details. 
that should that should be a key for us to focus. Uh, are these authors showing their work? Is a question we can ask. And how can we be strong through our efforts? Right, not lower ourselves to some standard we're seeing. How can we practice that diligence? Again, this is us walking through these steps together to become voices, to become leaders in our own small civic circles or in our own families. Are we doing these steps? Are we teaching it to others? Um, you know, are, are we being less, less, let me think about a fishing metaphor. You know, when when there's a tactic or, or a warm, maybe they're just hungry when they're biting, right? A lot of a lot of sensational news on the on social media is trying to is, is what we call clickbait, right? It's trying to grab us, trying to hook us, trying to uh, snag us. And how do we be less gullible to that? How do we respond with less emotion? Well, okay, I'm not asking us to be robots here, right? Um, but what we want to recognize is emotionally driven language, whether it's written or spoken, right, performed or uh, you, know, you know typed, is uh, can be used as a tactic to to persuade. It's it's a persuasive tactic. Bottom line. And what we have to be able to recognize in those instances is, am I being persuaded purely on the emotional language? of the written word or spoken word, or is there substance behind it that, that should raise the alarm? I'll put a pin in that for now. Okay, a couple more questions and we'll be out for today. Let's shift to the Pop Culture Introductory Perspectives book. Marcel Denisi on page 268. Denisi explains that Web 2.0, that in the Web 2.0 world we live in, New pop culture platforms do not drive out old pop old platforms as it used to, but they work together. Ah, oh, good reading, good observation. That's right. I concur. We should just make you a point, but you're setting up setting up the question. Uh, but yes, that's accurate. Do you think that there will ever be a time that a new platform emerges that would drive out current social media or other forms of technology we use? Hmm. Here's here's what I would say. And it's all speculative, but let's look at the history of media, mass media, and then let's project forward. We can anticipate such a shift will inevitably occur. It's something will change at some point. Some, what we call a paradigm shift, will trans uh, transpire, uh, and 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 you know the game will change again. But on in terms of or other forms of technology we use. Well, do you still play a Nintendo 64 or did you move on to a Wii or did you move on to a DS or you know what I mean? Like whatever the thing is, um, we're, we're more likely to change th than we than we realize. On 267, 268, uh, these pages tackle YouTube and how YouTube has been a giant in pop culture for some time now, given the levels of influence on YouTube ranging from news companies and politicians to everyday individuals. Question, do you think YouTube could eradicate news and other public television? I think that's a strong word. I think that's a strong word. Now, is YouTube owned by maybe our largest tech company? Yes. So, will they continue to kind of attempt uh, to monopolize? Yes. Uh, do we, do, do our U.S. governing regulation bodies seem uh, increasingly crippled and feeble to do anything about it? Apparently, it seems that way. No, but I, I need to pull in some, you know, some lawyers um, to, to talk about that. We need to pull some real data here, but, but, big but, uh, and I cannot lie, um, eradicates a strong word. Eradicates the strong word. And let me say this, there's too much choice. There's too much choice. Consumers like choice. Com competition is healthy in, in a capitalistic society. And there's too many valuable, here's the kicker. There are too many valuable sources that both use YouTube and vice versa and are used on YouTube. 
you you know it's so let's think about it as a semiotic uh symbi symbiotic relationship right semiotic means you know signs series of signs and symbols um symbiotic relationship meaning the two feed off of one another for survival uh, that said uh and i've come across even students some people will watch youtube only and my follow-up question is is that the healthy option we can get a lot of some different well first of all you get tv on on youtube youtube tv is, is you get a it's a cable package now you get a cable package on youtube tv so so and guess what that is that's that's news and that's sports and that's all the other stuff but it's not really youtube it's just on youtube youtube is just the medium uh relaying it from some other place in that case and guess what youtube's making money off that so why would they close off methods of making money uh, because that's ultimately what that's about all right that concludes uh, today's set of lectures. And of course, today can be any day because you can watch these anytime asynchronously archived for your reference and personal resources and archives. Uh, great job with these week three questions. These week three questions, so potent, so strong. We can't even tackle them in a day and these will be broken up. And uh, I've got four more pages of notes to go over uh, that I'll have to uh, budget time for future juncture and I look forward to that look forward to those as well as the future comments to come from you all not only in this class but in other courses throughout our communication media and ethics major at MACU uh, Dr. Casper signing off for now thank you for listening